Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green Sapperling deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Shrufus Sprout Sire as our commander, introduced in Foundation's Jumpstart. This 3 mana 1 1 Sapperling has Trample and says whenever any Sapperling we control deals combat damage to a player, we create that many 1 1 green Sapperling creature tokens. So that ability applies to Shrufus, but also to all the Sapperling tokens we would generate with the ability or with other cards. So so once we get the ball rolling and make a few sapperling tokens and start hitting the opponent, that number is going to get out of hand very quickly. So that's our game plan. Ideally pump up Shrufus so we can increase its power and make lots of sapperlings at once, and then eventually maybe pump up the team as well so we can make more and more tokens and eventually attack for lethal. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories to help with the breakdown. The first one is pretty classic for any green deck, which is ramp or mana acceleration, especially one mana a ramp card as that allow us to play Shrufus on turn 2 already are appreciated and we've got some other good ramp cards since we are looking to cast some expensive spells if we need to replay Shrufus if it gets removed a few times we'll also need that additional mana then we've got quite a few pump spells as well that can increase Shrufus's power and toughness and that way we can increase the number of sapperlings we generate once we hit the opponent and then once we have a few sapperlings in play, it's nice to have some anthem effects that can give the entire team plus one plus one, for instance. And eventually we've got some other finishers that also excel if you already have an established board. And then besides one-off pump spells, we also have some more permanent equipment that can stick around, enhancing Shrufus, giving it various abilities, like maybe flying to fly over any blockers, so it can connect and make sapperlings, or just increase power and toughness once again so we can make more of them. And then we get to the sapperling section, which includes more cards that generate sapperling tokens or that synergize with sapperlings. That way we don't necessarily need to get that initial hidden with Shrufus to get the ability going. And then the miscellaneous section includes a few more cards that can maybe give Shrufus evasion, like Key to the City and Champion, and some other cards that can potentially come in handy. So that's the rough breakdown. Now for the deep dive, starting with our mana acceleration. There's Birds of Paradise, Delighted Halfling, the two elves, as well as Utopia Sprawl at one mana. And then I've also included Insidious Fungus. Doesn't help us play Shrufus on turn 2, but we can sacrifice it on turn 2 to ramp by drawing a card and playing an extra land. And also has the utility of maybe destroying artifacts and enchantments. And as a fungus, it also has a tiny bit of synergy throughout. Then we've got Explore at 2 mana, which does the same as the Insidious Fungus. If we sacrifice it, draw a card, play an extra land. Then we've got Rampant Growth, which is now finally on Arena, introduced in Jumpstart as well. The Arcane Signet's always fine. And then Emerald Medallion, discounting our green spells by one mana. We've got Enduring Vitality, letting all our creatures tap for mana. Pretty nice if we've got some Sapperling tokens in play. Flare of Cultivation can be basically a Cultivate, but also has the added upside of maybe sacking a creature to cast it for free. So it can also synergize if we've got a few tokens in play. And then a Circle of Dreams Druid, also excellent if we already have some creatures on the battlefield, making lots of green mana. And Nissa gets to take advantage of our 40 basic forest mana base, essentially doubling up our mana, untapping a land as well, which can then also produce more mana. So that's another great way to start casting all our expensive spells. Then our pump spells include Giant Growth, a classic. Then a Groundswell is another new addition on Arena, giving plus 4 plus 4 for just one mana, assuming we enabled Landfall, which this is the only Landfall card in the deck, which is why I'm not running any fetch lands, so we can uh, keep the mana base a lot simpler. Then Might of the Masses can also give our creature lots of extra power and toughness, assuming we already have some creatures on the battlefield. Royal Treatments, kind of a protection spell, giving Hexproof until end of turn, but also leaves behind the plus 1 plus 1 and Ward 1 roll token. Then we've got Snakeskin Veil, also giving Hexproof. Overprotect, plus 3 plus 3, Trample, Hexproof and Indestructible. Titanic Growth, pretty good on rates, giving plus 4 plus 4 for 2 mana. And then we've got the Blanchwood Armor, not a classic pump spell, but more of an aura that can give a permanent plus 1 plus 1 for each forest we control. So another payoff for having lots of forests in our mana base. Then there's a Monstrous Step, giving plus 7 plus 7 for 5 mana, but we also get to essentially take out an opposing creature, which is pretty good. We've got Become Immense, which can take advantage of additional cards in our graveyard with Delve, giving plus 6 plus 6. Bounty of Might is 6 mana for potential plus 9 plus 9 across all our creatures. We've got Primal Might, which is also a fight spell. Tyvar Stand is quite flexible, can sink a lot of mana into it, but can also just use it for X equals 0 to give Hexproof and Indestructible until end of turn. 
and then exponential growth can be a lot of fun if we've got a lot of mana to sink into it as we can double a creature's power x times so that can also get out of hand especially if we already had some additional power to begin with then our anthem effects include an actual anthem card, Sylvan Anthem, giving plus one plus one to all our green creatures. And whenever a green creature enters, we get to scry one. So this is perfect with all our cyberlink tokens entering, letting us scry one repeatedly. Then we've got Heraldic Banner and Patchwork Banner, not only making mana, but also pumping up our creatures. We've got Banner of Kinship, which is excellent if we already have an established board, giving all our creatures a massive boost. Then a Caged Sun can also essentially double our mana while giving our creatures plus one plus one. Immortal Sun gives them plus one plus one while drawing extra cards each turn, giving us a discount on our spells, and also shutting down all Planeswalkers, which we don't really mind. And then there's the Preposterous Proportions, also a new card from Foundations, giving our creatures plus ten plus ten and a Vigilance until end of turn. It can also be an excellent way to close out the game. And speaking of closing out the game, a Crater of Behemoth, typically the last card that's cast in any game of magic, then our equipment start out with the Cliffhaven Kite Sail, which is the most efficient way of giving a creature flying as it gets equipped for free. We've got a Blank Blade Reforged, which is 3 mana to equip a legendary creature, giving plus 1 plus 1 for each land we control. So pretty similar to the Blanchwood Armor, but at least if our creature gets removed we'll still have the equipment left. And then we've got the Swiftwood Boots giving haste and hexproof. Can be nice to maybe recover from a board wipe to immediately get in with our Shrufus again, or to just protect it from a spot removal. Then there's a brooch giving a non-basic land walk. So most matchups our opponent's gonna have a non-basic land in play, which then means our Shrufus can become unblockable. Hand of Vecna is better if we can play it early while we still have a full hand, giving additional power and toughness. Sword of Fire and Ice is one of the better swords, dealing damage and drawing cards if we manage to hit the opponent, and hopefully the protection from blue and red is relevant in certain matchups. Not playing any green swords, because that could be awkward in combination with our pump spells, because a creature that has protection from green cannot be targeted by our green pump spells either. Then we've got a Sword of Vengeance, which is another new reprint in Arena, giving plus two plus zero, first strike, vigilance, trample, and haste, all useful keywords. And then our sapperling cards include Fungal Plots, which we're mostly using to sacrifice two sapperlings to gain two life and draw a card. So if we're maybe attacking all out with a bunch of 1-1s one and our opponent has a few profitable blocks, we can at least still sacrifice those sapperlings to draw. And it's also good in the face of a board wipe and can maybe make some sapperling tokens if we exile creatures from our graveyard as well. Sapperling Migration, just two mana make two sapperlings or six mana make four of them. Got the Spore Crown Thalet, not a sapperling in myself, but does give our fungus and sapperling creatures plus one plus one. Metallic Mimic can have all our sapperlings enter with an additional plus one plus one counter. Then we've got another sapperling token maker that can tap for mana. Spore Swarm makes three sapperling tokens at instant speed. Roaming Throne can double the triggers from our sapperling creatures, so also very good in combination with Shrufus. Then a Tender Shoot Ride's already a good magic card, but especially here in a sapperling deck where we get to give all sapperlings plus two plus two if we reach the city's blessing while making a sapperling token at the beginning of each upkeep so that also includes the opponent's upkeep that's an ability we'll see a few times here on the verdant embrace in the form of an aura giving plus three plus three as well as a verdant force making one of those sapperlings each upkeep and then there's a Verdaloth, another new reprint on Arena. A 4-7 can kick it to sink additional mana into it and make that many sapperling tokens giving sapperling and tree folk plus one plus one and then the miscellaneous section has a few more ways to make creatures unblockable with key to the city, can also help us loot. And then a champion of Lamehold can also make our team unblockable. There's a winter moon to punish non-basic lands, another perk of playing 40 basics. Parallel lives to double our tokens, not playing doubling season since we're not doing too much with plus one counters and we don't have many planeswalkers to benefit from it. Can be a bit of a win more effect since sometimes you're just better off increasing power and toughness on your saplings with an anthem effect, which can also essentially double the number of saplings you generate once you hit the opponent, but can still be fun. And then there's Force of Vigor, which we can sometimes play for free to blow up opposing artifacts and enchantments. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Drana and Limvala. Luckily only stops activated abilities and not triggered abilities. And this hand could work. Got a way to make Shrufa's unblockable, monstrous step to pump it up and maybe take out a creature. And then Champion can also keep growing as we make more sapperlings. 
Although Soul Warden is going to gain the opponent a lot of life here. So if I draw a land, I could still go explore into a 3-drop. So your opponent is clearly dedicated to the life gain theme. Yeah, in this case we'll just go with Shrufus, keep up Tyvar's stand for protection. And then with a land we could monster step, if not maybe activate key. Alright, Vito is getting pretty scary now, so that's a must answer with monster step. Otherwise, we're just gonna die as we make sapperlings. Needed a land here, so what's the move? Could still attack and plan to use Tyvar's stand. Could just explore and see what else we get. And then maybe still activate key. Titanic growth isn't bad. So now I don't mind attacking. So if I do Titanic growth, we get 5 Sapperling, which gains the opponent 5, we lose 5. That's still manageable. Since at least a veteran doesn't trigger here. But yeah, finding an extra land would be helpful. Dried already has the city's blessing. So it would give our sapperlings plus two plus two. And there's a land. So monstrous step. Making sure to target veto. And then I don't mind attacking with everyone, since we'll get a bunch of replacement sapperling tokens. And then once we get the sapperlings, Vito is no longer in play, so we don't lose any life. All right. Now, of course, there is still Soul Warden keeping the opponent alive. But now we're capable of casting Tender Shoot Ride as well. 1 1 Death Touch is fine. And a Blood Artist. That one's potentially more of a problem. Okay. Now, Champion of Lampold is also interesting, since that's a way to make our team unblockable at some point. But for now, Thundershoot still has to be the play. Go to Tyvar Stand for protection. And then just send in the tokens. Shrufus doesn't need to get in there. That's 33 damage coming across. And uh, 33 Sapperling tokens being generated. So your opponent does jump with a veteran, also triggers Blood Artist. Alright. Now we just gotta hope to dodge a board wipe or some other combo that drains us to death. Because we are pretty low. Now we can enjoy all the Soul Warden triggers. As our opponent's life total stabilizes. Alright. Pass a turn. Get another Sapperling. Opponent back up to 42. Possible they have a way of bringing creatures back out of the graveyard, which is why they chumped. Six mana, activates Necropolis. Okay, so opponent's just hoping for the best. And a Cold Blade is probably not going to make a huge difference. So 
So they can attack for three or four damage here, and then next turn face our lethal army of Samperlings onto the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Obira, blue-black fairies, or just flash in general. Our hand is functional. Is it exciting? Probably not, but I'll keep. Medallion giving green spells a discount makes it easier to empty out our hand. Although it doesn't help with casting banner. Can expect a decent amount of instant speed removal and counter spells out of a fairy style deck. For now... Yeah, it's probably medallion. And then next turn I could deploy both creatures. Take my turn. Most counter spells counter unless we pay two mana. So I can start with Thalid. And if that baits out a counter, maybe Shrufus can stick around. But we might just see Obira end of turn. If they remove Shrufus, I can still replay it next turn, thanks to the discount from Medallion. And explore the draw. Yeah, I could start there. Try and attack. Don't think I can Titanic Growth while they put good mana up. And they had a Brazen Borrower to bounce Shrufus, that resolves. So we didn't make a ton of progress here. But neither did our opponents. Force of Vigor not looking amazing in this matchup. Bono doesn't really need lots of artifacts and enchantments for their game plan. So our hand could use a bit more action. A Rankle can be a way to make a sacrifice a creature. Although, yeah, at least Rufus will survive. Don't mind discarding Force of Vigor if that's what they decide to do. And our opponent chose all modes. So yeah, we've got a opportunity to get in with Shrufus. A land to enable Groundswell would also be appreciated. Alright, so play a land, Groundswell. Attack could also Titanic Growth, in which case we get uh, nine Sapperlings, which is maybe worth it, although I'll lose the banner. So maybe just getting in for five and then playing Banner of Kinship is good enough. Everyone gets plus six, plus six. And now every one of these sapperlings threatens to make more of them. If they want to make me sack a creature, that's fine. If they want to make me discard titanic growth, that's acceptable. So the only concern is somehow getting drained to death. But I don't think that's quite happening. If they make me sack a creature, I actually think sacking Shrufus is fine. Since we can just replay it. But they don't. And wow, a Tendershoot ride. That was an amazing draw. So with four blockers, they actually do survive. But now Black Blade Reforged on Shrufus should be the final nail. Yeah, playing Tendershoot doesn't actually change anything. Like, my creatures are already pretty big. They get to block four, so... No, I guess it does still present lethal here if there's no interaction. 
since we would have two creatures going through, dealing nine damage each. So I guess if they do have instant speed removal for Shrufus when we try and equip Black Blade, it's better to just play the Thunder Shoot at that point. My opponent had a fatal push for a token, as it turns out. So they're not dead, but they will have to chump with pretty much everything. So, yeah, we'll see. There's still maybe a chance our opponent can get us with more hasty flyers. Although Rankle's kind of unique in that regard. So we get nine sapperlings, and sure I'll empty out my hand. So we've got seven life, Obira can drain us, but that's four mana to redeploy. So we'll see. Maybe they've got Rankle's Prank, for instance. That's four damage, I believe, so that would do it. It would be pretty fitting as well. Or they can hope to draw into a sweeper. GG's either way. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Chaos Crafter, so a Mardu Artifacts deck. This hand is not great, we're missing a 1 mana Accelerant, and the rest of our hand doesn't do a whole lot. This one's also pretty clunky. We're gonna struggle to cast our commander in the first place. Alright, this is our best hand by far, and Wintermoon could be quite effective in this matchup. So... Turn two can play Shrufus. Turn three Winter Moon can slow the opponent down, and then turn four Nissa, perhaps. What we don't have is a way to enhance our commander, so if they play an early blocker, we might struggle to get past it. But a giant growth can now help. Alright, we'll see if they have removal. Opponent is playing with a lot of basic lands so far, so we may not get the best out of Winter Moon after all. For now we can attack, and if they block we still trample for a nice bit. And make three sapperlings. If I play Winter Moon now, our opponent knows to keep fetching basics, but May as well get it out there. That's at least one non-basic in play now. And Marvin is next. Parallel Lives is pretty fun here, can double our tokens. And then we can play Nissa first. Untap Utopia Sprawl. And I guess never mind, we're still gonna be one mana short, since I didn't have a mana floating. So probably would have been better off untapping a regular forest here. Statuary is next. And the preposterous proportions is pretty awesome here. So we'll cast it, and that's just game over. But we would also get a healthy amount of sapperlings here, or well, I guess unhealthy amount depending on how you look at it. But yeah, that's at least 50 more tokens coming our way. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Xanathar, a guild kingpin, so blue-black kind of a controlling deck. Yeah, this hand's okay. Force of Vigor might be able to blow up some artifacts, and Sword of Fire and Ice has relevant protection. Sylvan Anthem, a way to pump up our creatures while digging towards maybe more lanes here, to get to 5 mana for Banner. Although getting Shrufus to actually survive might be the challenge in this matchup. Opponent with an Iron Crank for now. 
Yeah, still gonna run it out here. Good force of vigor with Iron Crag. I'll keep a land. I think we'll wait until our opponent deploys another artifact, and there we go. So now Force of Vigor is looking good. Destroy both. Embrace can go. Does our opponent have a counter spell? They could. So just attack. Can play sword but wouldn't have the mana to equip. And Thalads would pump the team. Could be alright, since then next turn I can maybe equip Sword and play Thalid. Not the best if our opponent plays a Sweeper. Might actually just want to play Banner as well while we have some Sapperling tokens in play. I think we want to dig for something a little different. So we have options, can either equip Sword or just play a Banner. The banner is going to be a little bit more exciting once we have more sapperling tokens in place. So we'll try this. Diversify by equipping a sapperling token. You can always move the sword to Shrufus second main. And then we'll get to scry a bunch before drawing with a sword. So we can maybe be a bit pickier. Looking for maybe artifacts and enchantments that survive a uh, board wipe. Champion would be good with our current board, but again, need to plan for the worst case scenario, which is our opponent wiping the board. Bounty of Might is a way to pump Shrufus to maybe get the ball rolling again. So that wouldn't be bad. Sure, I'll keep that on top. Since we can cast it next turn. And then I may as well move here. So do you have a sweeper? You sure do. Deadly cover-up. So yeah, that's what I was fearing. Can replay it. So had I played banner instead of equipping sword, I would have been able to at least bump my creatures a bunch. Immortal Sun's a good one. But uh, yeah, Bounty of Might could still represent a lot of damage. Sculpting Steel can copy Banner. So they still have two mana up. So we have a couple options. Just playing Immortal Sun is kind of the safer play. Going for Bounty could work out poorly for opponent's gut removal. Yeah, I'll just go for Immortal Sun. That resolves. Hit you for three, make three Sapperlings. And a Might of the Masses seems fine. Now with the discount from Immortal Sun, it's easier to redeploy Shrufus if it does get removed. We get to draw. Winter Moon not particularly effective, just the one non-basic in play. So, yeah, can just move to attackers and then... We'll see what they do. Could also equip one Sapperling first. Although then I wouldn't be able to play both Bounty and Might. But I guess Might is only plus four here. Or we could just play a Banner and see if that resolves. If our opponent overload Cyclonic Rifts, I'll regret it. Alright, so looks like that's gonna get the job done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Bristly Bill, so the deck going tall versus hopefully our deck going wide. Parallel lives a way to double our tokens, although the problem with this hand is that it doesn't really have a way for Shrufus to connect and start making Sapperlings in the first place. Like, this is a pretty amazing hand otherwise, but I don't really see this working out in this particular matchup. We make a bunch of mana, we draw parallel lives, but then we still have a 1-1 one -one that doesn't attack. I'll take a mulligan. Brooch not going to be great unless our opponent's playing some non-basics. 
which is still possible. Yeah, I think I prefer this hand overall. But yeah, I would not be shocked if our opponent's just on mono forests. And a pretty decent start with a bunch of elves, Sylvan Tutor. Curious to see what that searches up. It's going to be a Mossborn Hydra, another recent addition from Foundations. Alright, Kite Sail is more relevant as it can give flying. So we have a pretty much dead card in hand, but hopefully we'll still be able to get the ball rolling. So opponent can play a land, double number of counters, and then Bill can eventually double them as well, so that's going to get out of hand very quickly. Opponent's got a pair of tutus, so we don't have the best attack either. So play might be Banner, attack, opponent's just going to take four, so I'm not going to ground swell. Could still play the Kite Sail to use my mana. Could also try and keep something back to block, but yeah, the Hydra is going to get too big and we'll lose the landfall bonus. So I may as well attack. But don't expect any blocks. And then second main, I think I still play Kite Sail just to be mana efficient. And then we've got a token that's pretty much guaranteed to hit the opponents and make more sapperlings. Now the Hydra does trample, so that's still going to be an issue. And our opponent can stank the triggers so that they get the counter and then double. So that's already a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, I can see why they searched it up with a tutor. And now a safekeeper for protection, so yeah, we're not going to try to take out their creatures. Opponent activates Bill, Hydra 12-12, and next turn that's just going to be too much for us to handle. Fungal Plots doesn't change the math. Yeah, maybe if we had one more pump spell that we get to play on the flyer, we can make something happen. But it's asking a little bit too much. Our opponent did have a, an amazing start here, to be fair. With the two elves and the Hydra. So we can pump. Make eight sapperlings. They're all 2-2. Two -two. But I still don't think that's going to be enough. We'll see. The Hydra triggers, 26-26, and they can activate Bill one more time. So yeah, that's just going to be way too much. 52-52. We've got 16 toughness to throw in front. And yeah, don't need me to tell you that's lethal. Opponent even has the kite sail to fly over just because. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Brocco's Apex of Forever. And uh, Wintermoon could be effective against a three-color deck, but this hand feels way too slow. Lots of three drops, including equipment that need to be equipped. This one's not much better. Still no mana acceleration. Take a mulligan. Well, this might be our best hand so far. Still not incredibly exciting. Hand of Vecna also gets worse if we're mulliganing, so that might have to go. But between Banner and, I guess, another Banner, we have ways to ramp to set up an exponential growth, as well as pumping up our Samperlings. Opponent starting with Swamp is not what we wanted to see. Now Island. Now it is very much possible because we're playing lots of basics ourselves and the deck is not playing too many quote-unquote busted brawl cards that um, therefore the matchmaker is also matching us against decks that don't have a ton of those cards so maybe winter moon is not at its best 
In a face of three mana, I'll just go for banner. And we can wait a turn or two on Shrufus. Because if they have creature removal in hand, I would rather just develop my mana. Now Fabled Passage getting another basic, so Winter Moon not doing anything so far. And then I wouldn't mind drawing a lane, so we can go Banner into Shrufus. It's going to be Thalad instead. Yeah, I'll still try this. So the Thalad pumps Sapperling tokens, or creatures in general, but a fungus itself. And our opponent was holding removal, so Murder Strider takes it out. So next turn we can give Shrufus a shot. And we can even protect it now with the Royal Treatments. Ideally we put a Verdant Embrace on it before we cast Exponential Growth. Because then it's going to be a lot more effective, but thanks to the two banners we already start out with 3 power. So it's actually not too bad if we were to Exponential Growth. Can do it for x equals 2 if we draw land. It is 5 mana to mutate Brokos. So we'll see if that's the play. It is not. See if this can successfully protect Shrufus. The extra 1 power from the roll token would also help with exponential growth. But they might have another removal spell available. Heartless act now. Alright, that's too bad. Back to the command zone. And uh, yeah, back in play we go. Crater Hoof is going to be effective post exponential growth once we've got a bunch of sapperlings in play. Feed this worm now too. So yeah, our suspicions earlier were correct. Our opponent was sitting on a bunch of creature removal. Alright, third time's a charm. Not gonna have the mana to replay it after this. Winter Moon yet to see a non-basic land. And now Cavern Whisper, another mutate card, makes us discard. Interesting spot. So next turn they can mutate again, which will make us discard once again. Next turn I can go for Exponential Growth, which is probably going to be the play. Making a bunch of Sapperling. So maybe Verdant Embrace can go, and then there's a hope we can curve Growth into Crater Hoof on the following turn. Although it still requires drawing a lane, then of course we also need to discard once again. So I can't leave Crater Hoof as the only card in my hand. Circle of Dreams Druid the draw. Or put in attack, which makes sense because they want to block Shrufus, so I don't necessarily put them on having a removal spell left. So let's try this. X equals 2. Ponon does seem to have an instant in hand, so that could be bad news. Alright, 12 power. Attack. They can trade, but we'll still trample for 8. Trade happens. And get our 8 Sapperling tokens. Now with Circle of Dreams, it could be feasible to replay Shrufus. We also don't have to worry about our opponent making us discard again. So the curve of Circle of Dreams into Shrufus to make more Sapperlings could work out. Or maybe just cast Crater Hoof next turn if it's lethal. A Sweeper would be painful. Alright, there's Brokos, just a 6-6 trample, and yeah, Crater Hoof should be game over. So we're not going to keep the opponent waiting. And I guess even just attacking all out without Crater Hoof would have been exactly enough, I believe. 3 times 7 going through. But now we've got a little bit of damage to spare. Awesome, on to the next one.
All right, we're on the play, facing Zimon and Dina. So yeah, the Brooch should be decent against the three-color deck. We have a couple pump spells and Mimic. Yeah, I'm willing to give this a try. What we're missing is some mana acceleration. It would have been nice to, for instance, play a ramp card turn one, so we can already play Shrufus on two, or maybe wait to play it with Tyvar Stand as protection. But now we get to curve Metallic Mimic into Shrufus. Opponent already has a non-basic, so we can attack past any blockers. Typically, a Zimon and Dina deck is going to have a decent amount of ramp and creatures. So don't expect too much removal, but they already had the Edict. Which would have played around Indestructible and Hexproof as well, for what it's worth. Yeah, I think I still gotta play Shrufus here. If our opponent's natural plays Zemon on 3, then next turn we can attack into it if they block Tyvar Stand, or I guess we can just Primal Might for 3. And that's the cleanest play. 4-4 four, four, takes out 3-4 in a fight, and we get to make 4 sapling tokens. And then we still have a couple pump spells left that we can fire off at instant speed. So the main card we don't want to see is some sort of board wipe, because it's going to be a little bit tricky to rebuild. Although I guess with 5 mana I can still replay Shrufus next turn. Wall of Blossoms. Can soak up an attack. And a Kami. Can also trade for a Cyperling. Opponent could still play another land. Which they do. Surveilling once again. Ooh, nice banner. Pumping the team was an excellent pickup. Essentially doubles the number of Cyperlings we're going to generate. Means that Kami doesn't get to trade either. And yeah, I don't mind casting Titanic Growth. Trample over the wall. And still have Tyvar stand available as protection. Boon falls to 8. And we've got a boatload of sapperlings incoming. So once again, just gotta dodge a sweeper and we're good. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Facing Delny, Streetwise Lookout. This could actually be a commander playing all copies of Hair Apparent in their deck, which would be pretty fun to see. This hand feels a little slow. This one's not amazing, but at least Sword of Fire and Ice can maybe deal some damage. Take out Delny. And we've got a little bit of a ramp. Armor to enhance our creature alongside Sword. Alright, never mind, opponents. Still playing with Esper Sentinel, so probably not a all hair apparent deck. Do we play Arcane Signets? I don't have to, but it would maybe set up 5 mana for Sword Equip. So, sure. Draw your card. Turn to Mindstone. And we can make a Sapperling token here. Yeah, I think this is fine. Also keeps making more mana for us. Now Enduring Vitality is looking better too. And it's going to be easier to pay the Sentinel tax. So there's Delny. Which also synergizes with the Sentinel. Although, let's see... Yeah, I guess it's not quite worded once per turn like you might see elsewhere. So we basically get to untap with 5 mana. Yeah, maybe it's still worth it to play Sword Equip on the Sapperling, and then we can mow down Delny if they take it. So we might see them chump with a Sentinel. Yep. Well, they did get to draw their cards, opponent actually double blocks. That would be fine by me. Reconsiders. Chumping is strictly better than taking it, since now we get to mow down whatever creature they would have chumped with. 
And that's going to be Delny. But yeah, the Sentinels already drawn them three extra cards. We would love to keep hitting our land drops as well. Especially with armor getting better the more forests we have in play. Channeler synergizes with life gain, which we haven't seen so far. And Sentinel gets in for one. Alright, so there's still a Sentinel to worry about. Might be time for Shrufus to make the grand entrance. So maybe I will still play Medallion, which lets me play Shrufus and Mystic, even though opponent gets to draw once again. And I want to do this before combat, so we potentially get to uh, enable Shrufus' ability. And then, sure, I guess I'll play Mystic second main. Maybe we'll draw something that changes our play for now. Yeah, opponent's just going to get lost our Sapperling. And sure, I'll play Mystic still. Possible our opponents go to Mana Tithe in hand. They decide not to cast it, even if they did have one. Could also use the map tokens to explore into more lanes now. The one ring for protection means it's not a great turn to try and get an attack in. So this is going to be more of a setup turn. So you can play Vitality. We did draw land for the turn, so exploring is not a priority. So maybe it is just boots, equip. Can also equip the sword. Okay. And then this preposterous proportions is looking mighty fine. And wow, well, our opponent explodes, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kellen the Kid, so a band kind of foretell slash plot deck. Our hands got potential, missing maybe a pump spell, but the mimic can help grow Shrufus and author Sapperlings. Question is whether we play Shrufus turn 2, or want to play the Mimic first anyway. The Brooch should also be active against a 3 color deck. As our opponent gets a Breeding Pool and plays Halfling. Okay, so Halfling blocks Shrufus, although we can expect him to just play Kellen, which I would then be able to attack into with a Brooch, although that's my whole turn. If I go for Mimic, then next turn with 4 mana. Still wouldn't be able to quite double spell. So sure, I'll play a Shrufus. That does give us the possibility of maybe playing a pump spell if we draw it next turn to attack past Kellen. And I can still go Mimic plus Migration, which would likely be my play. So there's Kellen. And yeah, we drew the armor. So could make that play now. Giving plus three, making four Sapperling tokens. Now if they have removal next turn, we're just left with four Sapperlings. But then replaying Shrufus means we get to make even more, so I think it's worth it. Just setting up this one clean attack. And then next turn we can keep the ball rolling. Even if they keep blockers back, we'll have the brooch. Opponent passes, so yeah, we can expect some instant speed removal. Still don't mind attacking with all the sapperlings. And then playing the mimic first also makes sense, so those all pick up additional plus one counters. Name sapperling. And attack all out. Yep, 
and the elf can stay home. In virtue of loyalty, making a knight is acceptable. Opponent on double blocks considers it. All right, we'll get to trade. In hindsight, playing the brooch would have worked out, maybe. But we still get to make all those sapperlings. And then birds plus maybe a sapperling migration here. Don't really expect a sweeper in this matchup. That opponent did have a reprieve, as it turns out. But yeah, we're super far ahead on board. Can replay Shrufus, which will help make more sapperlings once again. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome! So yeah, we got to see our monogreen sapperling deck in action. And Shrufus certainly delivers. Now, do keep in mind, because the power level of our deck, according to the Arena Matchmaker, isn't super high, we also didn't get matched against some of the top-tier commanders, which, you know, can be an advantage or a disadvantage, depending on what type of games you're looking for. But if you're looking for fun games where you actually get to win the game more often than not, it's not a bad thing. And uh, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun playing this Sapperling deck. While there may not be a ton of actual Sapperling token makers on Arena, Shrufus takes care of that by just making all the sapperlings himself so yeah that's gonna do it for today's gameplay wanna thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day